Dementia is the most feared condition of later life. Through the Alzheimer's disease, a thief of memories, can feel like a one-way street. But what if there were ways to slow it down, even potentially reverse its effects? In this video, we'll be joining Dr. Michael Greger, a leading physician and author of How Not to Die, to explore the exciting potential of diet in combating Alzheimer's. Dr. Greger is a champion for evidence-based nutrition, empowering people to leverage food as a powerful tool for brain health. Today, we're diving deep into the science of Alzheimer's, uncovering the dietary patterns that might hold the key to slowing or even reversing its course. Get ready to explore the fascinating connection between your gut microbiome and brain function. Dr. Greger will shed light on how the trillions of bacteria residing in your intestines can influence your cognitive health. Learn how specific foods can nurture the good bacteria and starve the bad, potentially impacting your brain's resilience against Alzheimer's. Let's listen to Dr. Greger tell us more. Dr. Dean Ornish was the first to show in a randomized controlled trial that a plant-based diet and lifestyle program could apparently reverse the progression of our number one killer, heart disease, opening up arteries without drugs, without surgery. Then he showed the same plant-based program could potentially reverse the course of early-stage prostate cancer, and also elongate telomeres, suggesting an anti-aging effect as well. But when he told me he was going to see if he could reverse the progression of Alzheimer's disease, I was skeptical. Uh, surely he was biting off a little bit more than he could chew. Well, what was the result of Dr. Ornish's test on Alzheimer's disease? common misconception that we have no control over whether or not we develop dementia, but the good news is that although Alzheimer's may be incurable, at least it is preventable. So how can we prevent Alzheimer's disease? There's an emerging consensus that what's good for our hearts is also good for our heads, because clogging of the arteries inside the brain with atherosclerotic plaque is thought to play a role in the development of Alzheimer's dementia. This is what our cerebral arteries should look like, open, clean, allowing blood to flow throughout our brain. This is what atherosclerosis in our head looks like, clogged with cholesterol, closing off our arteries, clamping down on blood flow. Uh, what kind of brain arteries do you want in your head? It's pretty clear that we need to reduce the amount of plaque in our diets. Too much cholesterol in our blood is unanimously recognized to be a risk factor for the development of Alzheimer's disease. Those with a total cholesterol of 225 or more may have nearly 25 times the odds of ending up with amyloid plaques in their brain 10 to 15 years later. After all, what is the Alzheimer's gene, APOE? It codes for the major cholesterol carrier inside the brain. So how can we avoid too much cholesterol? Here are some animal foods that have low to no cholesterol. 1. Egg whites, virtually cholesterol-free. Egg whites are an excellent source of protein without the cholesterol found in the yolk. 2. White fish such as cod, haddock, or pollock. These types of fish are generally low in cholesterol and high in protein. 3. Skinless chicken breast. Removing the skin significantly reduces the cholesterol content while providing lean protein. 4. Turkey breast. Like chicken, skinless turkey breast is low in cholesterol and high in protein. 5. Shellfish such as shrimp or crab. Although some shellfish have higher cholesterol, they are still lower than many other animal foods and provide beneficial nutrients. 6. Lean cuts of pork such as tenderloin. When trimmed of fat, lean cuts of pork have lower cholesterol levels. 7. Game meat such as venison, typically leaner than domesticated meat, game meat tends to have lower cholesterol. This may explain the so-called Nigerian paradox, where they have among the highest rates of the Alzheimer's gene, but some of the lowest rates of Alzheimer's disease. How is that possible? Genes load the gun, but lifestyle pulls the trigger. 
The paradox may be explained by their low cholesterol levels, probably due to their diets low in animal fat. So, in terms of dietary guidelines for the prevention of Alzheimer's, we should center our diets around vegetables, legumes, beans, flippies, chickpeas, and lentils, fruits, and whole grains. In other words, the dietary pillar of lifestyle medicine, whole food, plant-based nutrition. More of that's too complicated. Plants, plants, and more plants. That may help explain why vegetarians may be up to three times less likely to become demented later in life. Uh, but it's not all or nothing. Even just substituting 5% of animal protein with plant protein appears to significantly reduce the risk of dying from dementia. So what about prevention? But prevention isn't sexy. When prevention works, nothing happens. But the same diet and lifestyle that helps prevent heart disease was proven to help reverse it. Until then, it was believed that heart disease progression could only be slowed, not stopped or reversed, similar to how Alzheimer's disease is viewed today. So what if you put people with Alzheimer's on the same plant-based program? What is the evidence that we have for the benefit of plant-based diets? The bottom line is that there's only one diet that's ever been shown to help reverse our leading cause of death, heart disease, in the majority of patients, a plant-based diet. If that's all a plant-based diet can do, reverse the number one killer of men and women, uh, then shouldn't that be the default diet until proven otherwise? And the fact that can also be so effective in preventing, arresting, or reversing the progression of other leading killers, like high blood pressure and type 2 diabetes, and now maybe even early stage Alzheimer's disease, would seem to make the case for plant-based eating simply overwhelming. And so Dr. Greger will now give us more head-exploding test details. They measured standard tests of cognition and function before and after in each group, as well as objective experimental biomarkers of disease progression. On the clinical dementia rating global scale, which is used to stage the severity of dementia, the control group continued to get worse. But the diet and lifestyle group started to get better. People diagnosed with Alzheimer's getting better? The same seemed to happen when measured with the Alzheimer's disease assessment scale, though this did not reach statistical significance. And using what's called the clinical dementia rating sum of boxes scoring, both groups continued to deteriorate, but the decline was significantly less in the healthy living group. Overall, Using what's called the Clinical Global Impression of Change scoring, most of the people in the control group kept getting worse, and none showed any improvement, which is what you'd expect with Alzheimer's. Whereas about 40% of those in the diet and lifestyle group appeared to be getting better within five months of eating and living healthier. Now, why did some get better and others not? Well, the more they complied with the recommendations, the greater the beneficial impact on their cognition and function. This helps to explain why studies of less intensive lifestyle interventions were not sufficient to stop disease progression, let alone actually improve cognition and function. The biggest limitation of the study is that, you know, unlike drug trials, where you can give people a disguised placebo sugar pill, when a study involves major diet and lifestyle changes, you can't rule out the placebo effect, especially for self-reported subjective, how's your memory been type questions. But the researchers also measured objective investigational biomarkers of disease progression and saw the same trajectory, improvements in the interventional group and worsening in the control group, with the same apparent dose-response effect, meaning the more they improve their diet and lifestyle, the more dramatic the effect. Compare that to the latest Alzheimer's drugs, which may not even work at all. All you may get for your $56,000 is a 1 in 3 chance of swelling or bleeding in your brain. 
When the U.S. Food and Drug Administration approved the drug anyway, the head of the American Geriatric Society replied, My head just exploded. Where does that leave us? A randomized, controlled, phase two clinical trial to see if the progression of Alzheimer's disease may be slowed, stopped, or perhaps even reversed by randomizing about 50 men and women diagnosed with early-stage Alzheimer's to either make no lifestyle changes for 20 weeks or to eat a whole food plant-based diet with supplements like vitamin B12, moderate exercise like walking a half an hour a day, stress management like relaxing with breathing exercises, and getting group support over Zoom. Remember, your health is the lock, and we're here to provide the keys. Keep turning to Key Health for insights that unlock your full potential. The key to lifelong vitality is in your hands, it's just one bite away.